Hello, it's barn cat day here at Mountain Creek Ranch. I'm Terry Tucker and this is the Tales of Mountain Creek Ranch. We did an earlier Tales of Mountain Creek Ranch about the barn cat and we were asked to do a little bit deeper dive in what we mean when we say every culture could include a barn cat and be successful. So I am welcoming you to this bit, a little bit more about the barn cat. I'm excited to bring the bit to you because the bit is just a little bit of leadership talk, a little bit of some coaching, a little bit of sharing of stories about experiences we've had, and so I welcome you to a little bit and I'm excited to share this next episode with you. So the question that's on the table that really challenges us in this episode is what is culture? What is culture? I get a lot of times my clients will say, oh, you should go to work for our company because of the culture. And then you ask the next question and the next question is, so what is your culture? And then it's kind of this flat answer of, I don't know, it's just the way I feel when I'm there. It's the way we treat each other. And you know that answer is actually very honest and very true. Culture really is the way we treat each other. It's the unspoken norms. It's how we conduct ourselves. It's what's accepted and what's not accepted inside any organization. Every organization has a culture. Every family has a culture, every school, every church, every business. It's just a matter of whether or not it's the culture we want to have. And great cultures are purposely and intentionally led. They're created, vision casted, and led. So on BIT, what we talk about is what can I do to vision cast, create, build and sustain a great culture. So cultures are critically important to our success. Uh, there's a great quote Peter Drucker put out, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And basically that means I can sit in a boardroom all day long and I can create strategies, but unless the people wrap their hearts and minds around them, it just doesn't work. It, they'll die. So culture eat strategy for breakfast is what the bit's all about. Now what we're talking about today is one individual personality type that is within our cultures or should be within our cultures. And that's that crazy barn cat that we met earlier. So great cultures are visioned, they're created, they're led, and they're sustained. And I will tell you that sustaining them is the hardest part. And that's why we need a barn cat, because the barn cat helps us sustain it. I often say, we only know if the culture lives by what the people do, by watching what the people do. So I watch the cultures that I work within, and I say, hey, are, is empowerment alive? Are they actually empowering themselves? Do they feel safe to take action and make decisions? Um, are they owning the customer experience? How do I know that? Uh, are they thinking critically and creatively? What's happening in this culture? You watch the people and you find out what they do. One of the people that's in that culture that is so incredibly critical is that barn cat. And that barn cat character, that barn cat role that's played in every single culture is the role of culture keeper. So instead of calling them barn cats in our cultures, I'm going to call them culture keepers because that's exactly what they do. So what are culture keepers? There are several things that will qualify them. So the first attribute of a culture keeper or the first indicator that you have one is these are the individuals who really sustain the positive aspects of the organizational environment. So they are the ones that are lifting up. They're the ones that are praising. They might be the ones that are leading your stand-ups. You find them at the heart of all the positivity that's happening. The second is that they are 
allowing others to orbit around their positivity. So it's not just them being a cheerleader, they're actually magnetic. They're people that draw people to them and encourage them to orbit around them. So it's like the barn cat that sees that little sleepy cat over there and says, oh no, you're not sleeping on my watch and runs over and just pounces on them and pretty soon they're rolling around and playing and laughing. And then that second cat that at one time was just minding his own business, just cruising, is now going around picking on another cat and saying, hey man, let's get this going. Culture keepers are kind of like that. They go from one situation and rally up and go to another situation and rally up so they allow others to orbit around them. Culture keepers, typically number three, they have incredibly high emotional intelligence. So what that means is they're pretty solid. They're pretty solid members of your team emotionally. So they don't ride that emotional roller coaster. And how I like to say it is, you really don't have to peek around the corner to see what kind of mood they're in that day to whether or not you're gonna engage with them. That they're pretty much positive, pretty happy, pretty even keel, not fluffy, not rainbows and unicorn stuff, but positive. And they don't go up and down on that emotional roller coaster. And then the fourth key quality of a culture keeper is that they embody the culture and they leave their mark wherever they go. So you think about if that barn cat took off uh, across sawdust or across the uh, broken up hay or something in the barn, that little barn cat would leave a footprint, right? That paw would leave a mark as he goes through. Well, culture keepers leave their marks. You can see that they've made a difference. There's ripples that come out of what they do for us. So those culture keepers uh, leave a trail, basically, of where they've been, and you can tell what they've done. So that kind of tells you what a culture keeper is, and now kind of think to yourself, who do I have on my team that's a culture keeper? Uh, we're, when we are looking for a culture keeper, when we want somebody to become a culture keeper on our teams, we want to lift somebody up and say, hey, I trust this culture with you. I, I count on you to keep it going. I count on you to allow others to orbit around you. There's really three traits that we look for in that culture keeper. The first is friendliness. I have professed for over 30 years, you can't teach somebody to be friendly. You just gotta hire friendly people. So the first trait of a culture keeper is that they're friendly. They're friendly to be around, they smile, they make eye contact, they answer questions, they ask questions, they're friendly. The second is that they actually have a desire to do better. That good enough is not good enough. We learn in the book Good to Great that good enough is the enemy of great. That the enemy of great is not bad or terrible. The enemy, uh, here's great, the enemy of great is good enough. But great is what the culture keeper strives for. So the culture keeper wakes up every morning with a desire to do better, to be great, to make something better than it is right now. And then the third trait of the uh, culture keeper is that they care about the whole. It's like leave nobody behind kind of thing. The culture keeper truly doesn't silo up, doesn't pick a favorite and hang on to just that one. The culture keeper kind of herds around and makes sure that everybody's coming along, that everybody's a part of it, and that what the culture keeper is doing is good for the whole. So those are the three traits you look for. So when you're trying to find a culture keeper saying, who's just naturally friendly? Who has that intrinsic motivation to do better and be better every day and challenge themselves to be the best they can be? And then third, who seems to holistically make decisions that are good for the whole? That's the culture keeper. And then you want to go to that culture keeper and say, I think I trust my culture with you. Now, think back to the barn and think back to the cat. Why does the barn cat stay? There's no leash, there's no collar, there's no fence. Why does the barn cat choose to stay 
in the barn and stay at our ranch? Well, there's really four reasons, four things that keep a barn cat in the barn. Number one is food. They stay where they're fed. Number two is responsibility. They stay where they're needed. So they uh, know that there's mice to be had here. There are bugs to get rid of here. This is my barn. This is my job. And the cat feels that responsibility and there's not something else coming in and intruding into that. So the cat stays for purpose. And then third, safety. Great ranchers like the ranch manager Goober, they provide a safe place for that cat. Little holes in the hay, a little door that bigger predators couldn't get in but the cat can get in, safe place to sleep and relax. So the cat knows he's safe and he's safe in the barn. He's going to stay. And then lastly, praise. You know, when we were shooting that video with the barn cat, there was absolutely no problem going over and picking up one of those babies. They wanted to be scratched behind their ears. They wanted their bellies rubbed. They loved that affection and that praise. They stay because they're social. They stay because they know they're appreciated and loved. So what in the world does that have to do with our work life or the teams we lead? the same exact thing. Why do culture keepers stay in our cultures? They stay in our cultures because we feed them. We give them opportunity to learn and grow. We are constantly breathing in fresh knowledge and fresh opportunity for them. So their food is opportunity. The next is responsibility equals purpose. They stay because they have a purpose and they know that purpose and they get to fulfill that purpose in our cultures. We want them at the table and we need them at the table. So they know that they are making a contribution that matters. The third is safety. Our culture keepers stay in our cultures because it's okay to try new things. It's okay to maybe make a mistake and apply that learning and try again. It's okay to have an idea and raise your hand and say, what do you think about this? It's okay to learn and it's okay to apply that learning. It's a very safe place. They know they're not going to be attacked. They know they're not going to be ridiculed or judged. They are treated with that respect and that element of safety. And then lastly, praise is that behavioral recognition, that recognition that says, man, what you did was great. And I want to talk about that for just a minute. We recognize behaviors. We can't just go up to them someday and say, you're just a great culture keeper. I just love it. You're just an awesome person. The reason why is they don't know what they did that you thought was amazing. And most importantly, the guy standing next to them doesn't know what that guy did that you found amazing. Behavioral praise, behavioral recognition gets more of the behaviors that you would like to see. So that's why our culture keepers stay. And our culture keepers are so important because leaders, we can't be everywhere all the time. We need those eyes and ears. We must purposely and intentionally find our culture keepers and allow our culture keepers to keep our culture the way we would like it to be. And then praise them, celebrate them, and give them a safe place to stay. So look what we learned when we looked at that little barn cat and said, wow, he fills a great role at the ranch. The ranch continues to teach us lessons of leadership and our bit will continue to bring those to life with you each and every week. Thank you for joining us for a little bit more on this Tales of Mountain Creek Ranch.